Welcome back to chapter 5, where we are in our last video that covers the topics of radiation and spectra from OpenStax astronomy. Now this particular section, the Doppler effect, is one that a lot of students struggle with understanding the most. Although chapter 5 is probably the most information intensive chapters that we cover in the curriculum um, in these lecture videos, this section is probably the single toughest section of chapter 5. So we'll try to make sure that we understand everything um, in this introduction video because Doppler effect comes up several other times in astronomy, how astronomers use it to get information, and so we want to make sure that we understand it so that we um, can understand those situations when they appear in our curriculum. So the Doppler effect is the apparent shift in the frequency and wavelength of a wave, whether it's a sound wave or a light wave, due to the relative motion between the source of that sound wave or light wave and the observer who's detecting it. So for example, if we had a speaker in a room where we were in that was producing a single tone, a single sound, a single frequency, if we ran towards that speaker or ran away from that speaker very quickly, there would be an actual change to what our ears detect compared to what that speaker was producing. The same works for light as well. Stars are going to be producing light, and if they move towards us or away from us, there will be a change to the overall wavelengths. A small one, but a change that astronomers can detect. Now the speed of the object, whether we're running towards a speaker or whether a star is moving away from us, the speed will tell us how much of a change there is. It will determine the amount of shift in that frequency or wavelength of the light or sound that we receive. And the direction of that motion, whether we run towards it or run away from it, will tell us how that change will um, be viewed. Are we going to hear a higher frequency or lower frequency sound? Are we going to see wavelengths that are longer wavelengths or shorter wavelengths? We will be introducing the terms blue shift and red shift in this section, and that is based on what direction the change is. And then speed tells us the amount of blue shift or the amount of red shift. Now, in our everyday lives, the more common form of Doppler effect that we might be familiar with is in sound waves, especially car horns or fire engine sirens or ambulances if you ever if you have ever been on a sidewalk and an ambulance drives by you very quickly you will be able to actually hear the difference between the sound when the ambulance is approaching you where it will be a higher pitch than what the ambulance is actually making and the sound when an ambulance is driving away from you where it's a lower sound than what the ambulance is actually producing we perceive that change because of the motion. If we look at this small um, GIF, this animation here on our slide, when the car is driving, there are shorter wavelengths. The lines are grouped together in front of this, the car, and anybody who is in front of the car and the car is driving towards them will see that shorter wavelengths. They'll hear that shorter wavelength sound or higher frequency and then behind the car, all of those lines are spread out. Someone standing behind the car and watching the car drive away from them will see longer wavelengths or lower frequency of the sound that they are hearing. There is a link here to an interactive version of this where there is a sound producing light or producing sound in the same... <laughs> an interactive version of this where there is a speaker producing sound in the same kind of way, sending out these circles of where the peak wavelengths are. And you can drag the source of the sound around, you can drive the, drag the observer around and see this change to the observed wavelength. So I highly encourage you to click on that if you are able to. Now, a, th a question for us then. We've introduced how the Doppler effect works in an everyday circumstance, car horns or sirens. Can you think of any other everyday situations that use this Doppler shift or Doppler effect? 
So pause the video if you need some time to think. Okay. It's totally fine if you couldn't think of any off the top of your head, and it's not something that we need to have known for this class. But to, just to make the connection before we start adding in the astronomy uses, there actually are a lot of different ways that we use the Doppler effect here on Earth. When police radar guns um, measure how fast a car is going, they're able to do that whether the car is driving towards them or away from them by measuring the amount of shift. They send out a radio wave, it bounces off the car and comes back, and then it is different based on the speed of that car. Medical ultrasonography. If you have an ultrasound or you need to have blood flow measured, the imaging equipment is actually seeing the difference between the um, types of electromagnetic waves it sends out compared to what it receives back. And it is a shift based on motion. It is a Doppler shift. And then Doppler radar, if you've ever heard that phrase, that is a way for us to track um, storm systems and cloud motion, again using radio waves that bounce off and come back and are now a different wavelength based on that motion, either towards or away. In astronomy, and we're going to start to use the, word, the phrase Doppler shift almost interchangeably with Doppler effect. In astronomy, we use the terms redshift and blue shift because we will almost always be talking about light when we're talking about shifts in, um, in anything due to motion. So with redshift, what we mean is the wavelengths that we are detecting have been shifted to longer wavelengths towards the red end of the rainbow um, compared to what we know that they're supposed to be. And blue shift means that the wavelengths that we are detecting have been shifted to shorter wavelengths, to the blue end of the spectrum. These changes are often very small, so we are looking at the shift in overall patterns that we know should exist in certain wavelengths, but we're detecting them in others. Now, what's really important for us to understand, one of the key misconceptions about Doppler effect is that students tend to think that blue shift means things will look blue and red shift means things will look red. These changes are small enough that Doppler shift does not change the overall color of the object that we're looking at. So for example, here we have a lab spectrum of all of the wavelengths of these um, spectra lines that we know are supposed to exist because of what we know about those elements and the energy levels and all of that stuff we talked about in the previous video. And then what we observe in a galaxy that is moving away from us. We see the overall pattern very similar, but all of those lines have shifted to longer wavelengths towards the red end of the spectrum. Now, if you look at the details in the textbook, and I strongly encourage you to at least look over it, there is equations that we can use and the shift is not identical for every single spectral line, but the overall patterns will shift in a way that we can visibly measure. It's just that the wavelengths will shift different amounts based on the original wavelength. And that, um, that equation is one that is useful to know about. It's in the textbook, but because it's not part of our curriculum to do calculations with it, I'm not going to include it here in this video. What we will try to do, though, is get a strong conceptual understanding of the Doppler shift and look at a couple of different ways that astronomers can visibly see differences or tell the difference um, and tell if a star is moving towards or away from it. The most important things to keep in mind for the Doppler effect can be summarized in this short list here. If we're able to notice a shift, it means that we have something to compare to. Most often this is information gathered in a laboratory where nothing is moving. So a lab spectrum or a known wavelength or something like that. But we need to have something to compare to. A single star's spectrum does us no good if we don't have a pattern to look at that we know is supposed to be at rest. 
The next pair of things to consider is that if we see a shift to shorter wavelengths or longer wavelengths, that tells us what direction the object is moving. Is it moving towards us or is it moving away from us? And that is something Doppler shift can tell us. And then the last pair of things in this list is one that a lot of students completely forget about somehow by the end of this section that is really important for us to write down. How fast or slow an object moves will be something that we can determine from the Doppler shift by seeing a large change or a small change. We can have objects that move fast towards us or fast away from us or slow towards us or slow away from us. And so the direction towards and away is a different piece of information than the speed, fast or slow. Both of those are something we can get from the Doppler shift. So let's start with a couple of example stars. So we are looking at a set of four stars compared to a laboratory spectrum and where we are seeing this pattern of lines. And again, this is somewhat simplified. The pattern doesn't all shift the same way, but for our purposes, we're going to um, think about it like that, just like we did with the galaxy spectrum from a couple of slides ago. So we have a couple of questions that I want us to ponder. So I'm gonna put these three questions up. I would like you to pause the video and try to think through your answers to them before we go through them. All right, hopefully you paused. So I've drawn this um, dashed line in here to help me out and to help us all out. So the first question, which stars are moving away from us? Okay, step one is to remember or look at our notes to recognize that moving away means the shift will be towards the red end of the spectrum, a red shift. If we look at the pattern, and in the lab spectrum, we see that there's a pair of lines, then there's a line kind of by itself, and then there are three lines kind of grouped together. And what I've done is drawn a line vertically at that single line in the pattern so that we can more easily tell how the change has happened. In star one, the whole pattern has shifted leftwards towards the blue side. It is moving towards us. So that's not question one, um, what it's looking for. In star two, the whole pattern has shifted a little bit to the right towards the red side. So that star is moving away from us. Star two is moving away from us, like question one asks. In question three, the pattern has shifted so much towards the blue side that one of the lines is now off the end of the um, picture. That's towards us, that's not what it's asking. And then question, or star four, the whole pattern has shifted to the right um, and we see that that is um, shifted towards the red side. That is a star moving away from us. So question one, the answer is star two and star four. Both of those are moving away from us. All right, question two, which star is moving the slowest? Now remember, slow and fast do not care about which direction the shift happens. All they care about is how big the change was between this now vertical green dashed line and where the pattern actually is. And if we look at all four of these stars, the one that has shifted by the smallest amount overall is star two. And so for question two, star two is moving the slowest. And then question three asks if we can tell the color of any of these stars. This is really important for us to recognize here that Doppler shift cannot tell us the color. The other thing that's really important for us to understand is the amount of lines on the blue side or the red side can also tell us nothing at all about color. In order to know the color of a star, we either need the spectral curve itself or we need to be given the temperature value of the star. So for question three, the answer is no, we cannot tell the color just from the information provided on the slide. Doppler shift does not change the overall color. We aren't grouping these into blue stars and red stars because that is not the case. Okay, 
Let's try a different situation. Now, instead of looking at a pattern, we are focusing on a single spectral line and we're looking at the number value wavelength of that spectral line. So for the particular spectral line that we're considering for this situation, this scenario, it is supposed to be at 410 nanometers when we measure it in a lab. So when we look at stars A, B, C, and D here, we have 407 nanometers, 421 nanometers, 402 nanometers, and 415 nanometers. So I want you to pause your video and think through the two questions that are shown here on the slide. Okay. Now to figure out what stars are moving towards us, we have to understand that towards means blue shift. And blue shift means we are talking about shorter wavelengths. If we think about wavelength kind of like a height, if someone is shorter than you, then their number value height is smaller. Shorter wavelengths mean smaller numbers than the 410 that we were expecting. So for question one, star A has a smaller number than what it's supposed to be, and star C has a smaller number than what it's supposed to be. So question one, the answer is star A and star C. For question two, we have to do a little bit of math. To know which star is moving the fastest, we have to know how much change there is. For star A, the difference is three nanometers. For star B, it's 11 nanometers. That seems like a lot. For star C, the difference is eight nanometers. And for star D, 415 compared to 410, the difference is 5 nanometers. So out of all of these stars, star B here is the one that is moving the fastest because the change is the greatest difference. 421 compared to 410 is the biggest difference, the biggest shift. That means fast motion. All right, two more questions. Same stars, same situation. Pause the video to think through them. All right, question three we had in the previous scenario, we reminded ourselves that Doppler shift does not change the overall color of these stars. Just because we're looking at a specific absorption line of Hydrogen doesn't tell us anything about a star's temperature or color. So for question three, we do not know what color these stars are. It is not the case that the blue shifted stars look blue. That's not true. And so we want to make sure we don't get blue shift and red shift confused with actual color of stars. And then question four, can we tell which star is closest to us? This gives us a chance to confront one of the other big misconceptions in Doppler shift. Doppler shift is not able to tell us the distance to a single star. If a star is moving towards us, that doesn't mean that it is near us. If we imagine sitting on in the middle of a divided highway, so we're safely in the median, but there are cars driving away from us and cars driving towards us, and we have that little radar gun that police use to check um, speeds. We can check fast and slow speeds on our right or left, and those cars are gonna be moving to way and awards, <laughs> towards and away. But the key thing is that as long as we can actually aim our radar um, at them, we'll be able to tell that speed whether they're nearby going fast or slow or far away going fast or slow whether they are close to us and getting even closer, or whether they have just passed us, they're near, but they're driving away from us. Doppler shift does not tell us the distance to stars. Doppler shift cannot measure distance to stars. So that's another common misconception and worth writing down. We will actually have to wait until chapter 19 in OpenStax Astronomy to talk about how astronomers measure the distances to the closest stars. It is not using the Doppler effect. So that's something to keep in mind as well. 
So this section is now complete. It's often the part of chapter five that students find the most complicated, not necessarily because of all of the new terminology like the rest of chapter five, but because there's a lot of tough things to think through critical thinking wise for Doppler effect. So process this, watch it again if you need to, um, and we will see each other in chapter six of the book when we start to talk about telescopes. So I will see you in the next video.